Hello everyone, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam and we are studying operating system into the process management. CPU scheduling algorithms, we are going to move towards that. So before we start understanding each algorithm one by one, it's important to know what CPU scheduling algorithms are. Why we need to make use of an algorithm? Why can't we simply come the process and put the process on it? We do something like that. So let's understand the reasons, the functions a CPU scheduling algorithm have and the goal that a CPU scheduling algorithm strive to reach towards, right? So the very first functionality, the very first reason we need to make use of CPU scheduling algorithms are we have multiple process in the ready queue and we have probably usually a single processor over which they want to get execution one by one. So resources are less and the the, the people who want to make use of the resource are more. So how to allocate the resource in such a manner that it gets utilized in the maximum way. Also, none of the process is left out in terms of its opportunity. So it simply decides which process to execute next, where on CPU. That means which one should go from the ready queue to the running state. That's what. So that decision is to be taken by whom? The CPU should be algorithm. And for taking that decision, it actually makes use of some of the criteria. Like if I take the name first come first serve. So this algorithm by the name itself says whoever is coming first in the ready queue will get a chance to execute first. Next, if I say shortest job first, then whoever is the shortest among the all jobs, among the all process will get the chance first. If I say priority scheduling algorithm, highest priority will get the chance first like these. All these are what? These are the criterias. So we make use of some criteria and implement those criteria with the help of scheduling algorithm. So this is how it actually works. Okay, fine. It works like this. But why? I mean, what are the highest goal that you are trying to achieve? Of course, there is just one, I mean, one very important goal to maximize the CPU utilization. We are making use of CPU scheduling algorithm so that we can maximize the CPU utilization. Now you would say CPU utilization maximize means you need to increase the throughput. You need to increase the efficiency of your system. Now you, are, you might ask what is throughput? Throughput is nothing but then the number of processes you are executing in the per unit of time. Whatever is the per unit of time, it could be per second, it could be per millisecond, it could be per minute probably. It depends on what system you are talking about, right? So the very first goal is maximize the CPU utilization. The next goal is it should be fair enough in such a manner it should be unbiased towards the processes. That means it should minimize the wait time for each process. None of the process has to wait for a very long time of period. Okay. Also, it should not give the starvation to the process. The process starvation simply means a process just keep on waiting for its turn to come and it never gets allocated the CPU. If your scheduling algorithm is making use of some such criteria which makes some process starvated in order to get the execution on CPU, then such algorithm is definitely not considered to be the good one. I mean, it's not reaching to its goal. Right? So these were the functions and the goals. Now we'll see the different categories of CPU scheduling algorithm. Now furthermore, we all understand that the CPU scheduling algorithms are categorized into two categories. As we were understanding the state transition diagram, we were trying to understand the transition from ready to running and running to ready. Again and again saying this is showing non-preemption, this is showing preemption. If an edge is coming from running state to the ready state, we say it's a preemption. If it's not coming, we say it's non-preemption. So likewise, scheduling algorithms could be non-preemptive and preemptive. That means a process could be fetched out of the CPU. A process is allowed to execute till its end like that. So the non-preemptive algorithms we will see in due course. First come, first serve, shortest job first, highest response ratio next. In fact, the priority based scheduling algorithm is in both uh, uh, base pre uh, preemptive as well as non preemptive in the preemptive scheduling algorithms we are going to see the shortest remaining time first round robin again priority uh, based algorithm also some some more can be designed like longest remaining time first like that so i mean yeah we are going to see them one by one in the due course next important parameter which i want you to understand is one is schedule length and the other is throughput 
because uh, some sometime in question they might just ask what is the throughput of the system what is the schedule length of the system or in this uh, scheduling algorithm what is the schedule length suppose you are just given some four process right or n process any n process which you are supposed to schedule one by one so the total amount of time taken by all the process to complete the execution the complete schedule if you have n process p1 p2 p3 p4 then the the length of the schedule the amount of time from starting of the first process to the ending of the last process is nothing but then the schedule length so that is simply taken up by the completion time of last process to the arrival time of first process and this first and last process simply means the first process which arrives in the system and the last process which finishes from the system which gets executed okay that becomes the last process now the throughput throughput is nothing but then the total number of processes executed per amount of time or per unit time so that simply means if i say that i have four process which got executed in 2 seconds then i would say that it is executing two process per second that take up my throughput of my system that is my efficiency so how do we generalize this suppose if we have total number of process that is n and we also have the schedule length that is l that is the amount of time taken in executing all the processes generally could be asked in any of the question so i mean for it's very general the same way throughput could be decided in the database the same way throughput could be decided in operating system and in the computer organization the throughput is always the number of uh, the amount of work done in your per unit time that's it this is exactly what i wanted to explain before we start the first cpu scheduling algorithm see you very soon in the next video bye bye